Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff and in the mail today I got an exciting box. This is from Motorola as you can see here and on the front of it it says Fragile, breaking news. Now I do know that this says Fragile, I just like saying Fragile. So on the box it says slide to start and what I know about this box is that it contains the Moto E second generation LTE variant and they decided to give this box in place of a press conference because MWC is right around the corner and rather than have us go to a press conference they figured hey let's make a fun little box thing and have people open it on camera so let's Go ahead and do our own little press conference. So slide to start. So as a side note, you can purchase this online now. This is available. And on the box, it says the new Moto E. And it says start here. So I'm assuming they want me to start here. Let's pop it open and see what's inside. Oh, looks like we've got a little press badge. And on it, it says... Erica Griffin, so it has my name, and then we've got, whoops, dropping everything. We've got a little memory stick, which usually contains press information, also spec information about the device. And then there is a little official card here, and it says, Moto E, welcome to the new Moto E press conference. Today we're doing something different. You probably have enough events and press conferences to sit through next week, so we're bringing this launch to you directly. Experience the new Moto E the way you want. Grab your badge and let's get started. So I'm assuming they want me to wear the badge. Okay, I'll play along. So we've got the badge. And we put that on. Just messing up my hairs. All right, so let's see what we have here. So it has a couple of flaps. So from the first flap, you're presented with the welcome desk. And then there's a desk here that has a bunch of Moto E devices on display. And then you open this second flap and it looks like we've got refreshments and coffee and such. Then we've got the doors and you go through those doors and there should be something under there. In here, there's a bunch of little cute little chairs. And then that looks like Rick Osterloh up there who's presenting the Moto E, and there is the Moto E right there. And it looks like someone got overzealous and ripped my box already. I don't know who did that or how that happened. But uh, I'm probably gonna have to switch to the desk right now so I can show this, but let's just kinda see if we can get this out. You come out? Yes, you come out. And there is the phone. Eh. Ta-da! I have it in white, it also comes in black. So let's go ahead and switch to the desk so we can get a better look here. Grumble, grumble. I really am sad that somebody ripped my box. I mean, come on now, Motorola. This is supposed to look all professional and stuff. This press badge was fun, but now it's just tinking against things and making noise. Move, move, move. So I do understand that this box contains some other stuff here. There's this secret compartment. And it looks like we've got a charger. You can see it's all one piece. And then we've got a couple of bumpers. So you can stylize your phone. So this little part comes off here. And uh, you can slip on either of these other bumpers. I like this one. So that is a nice touch. Hmm. Check it out. It actually looks quite nice. Let's go ahead and take this part off if I can. So for some reason, I really can't get this plastic protector off, so I'm going to use my special Ninja Turtles duct tape to try to ease this situation here. All right. Ta-da! Oh. There was some important stuff on here, such as this being LTE, 4.5 inch display, the new S. 410 SOCs inside of this. 
You've got a 2,390 milliamp hour battery. You can expand this with an SD card slot, although we have eight gigabytes of onboard storage. Of course, it's going to be less than eight gigabytes available. And now they advertise that there is a camera on the front because the original Moto E did not have a camera on the front. So here we have the new Moto E and the original Moto E. This is the one that I stuck in water and it died like within 24 seconds. I was testing out the coding, you know? I just get curious sometimes. I didn't expect it to die within 24 seconds. But on the backs here, you can see we've got that same dimple. It's a little bit more pronounced here on the new one. We still don't have a flash, but there's a microphone, standard headphone jack microphone, so they just look like they changed the placement. Then on the bottom we have a micro USB charging port. There's nothing on the left hand side. Then on the right hand side we've got the volume rocker and the power button. I really do like how this feels with these little bumper things. This really helps with the grip. You can see that texture there. So this phone looks like it's a little bit bigger but that is thanks to that larger display. The one thing that I have to check out and the one thing I'm concerned about is if there's going to be any light leaking because on the Moto E I could see light leaking in the dark all through this part here, right where the glass meets the case. It is not sealed properly, so I hope that's not the same issue here. Also, on the Moto E first generation in the dark, with the white one at least, not sure about the black one, I could see light bleeding through the back cover as well. What can you expect? It's a cheap phone, so I have to confirm that I will let you all know. Now the reason I get really excited about these Motorola phones, these cheap Motorola phones, is because for a cheap price you actually can get a decent Android phone and I like seeing how much I can push these phones. I like to see how much I can actually do with these phones as compared to a flagship device Android is upgrading. All right, so now I have it all powered up and I've had a little bit of a chance to use it. So there are some things that I want to say. Let's start off with this display, 4.5 inches. It's QHD, quarter HD, not quad HD. So the resolution is not very high and it does show. I can see that the resolution really isn't very high on here, especially when looking at text or looking at images that are small. There really is not all that much detail. Looking at the viewing angles, they're not that bad, but they're not incredibly great either. I have the brightness turned all the way up right now, and I went into the bathroom to see if there are any leaks from the backlight, and this device isn't leaking, like I was mentioning with the first generation Moto E. So no light leaks, no light leaks through the front or from the back cover, so it looks like they have resolved that issue. That is a very nice job from them. Looking at the colors of this display, they're not that bad, actually. As far as brightness, just at 100%. This isn't with automatic brightness in direct sunlight or anything. It's 378 nits. That's what I'm seeing right now. That's not too bad. I am seeing that the whites, the white point of this device is really kind of greenish looking. I went and looked to see the levels of red, blue, and green in this display, and towards the whites, yeah, there is a lot of green. The overall color temperature of this display does change a little bit. At the whites, it is actually less than 6,500K, so it does look quite warm, but as it goes from highlights up towards shadows, it is getting more blue. Not horribly blue, but it does get more bluish. So I think the display is okay, I really don't prefer it to be really greenish like it is. Then looking at the interface, it's kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes I see that it's nice and smooth, and other times I see that it really struggles and stutters. So let's see if we can check out the animations here. So the animations aren't doing too badly right now with this material design interface. But sometimes I'm telling you it gets real stuttery. But right now, it's not actually not bad at all. I love that Motorola has added the twist for quick capture and it does start up very nice and quickly. 
One thing that really irked a lot of people with the first generation Moto E is that there was no continuous autofocus in video. Now I'm happy to say that it does have continuous autofocus and I think that it works quite well. I'm not going to have a chance right now to go out and take pictures with this thing, but we don't have a flash. Looking at the special Motorola editions, we have Moto Assist Actions, which was the twist to capture. Whoops. That is very sensitive. And we've also got to display settings. So we have Moto Display. So just like with the Moto X, if you get a notification, you're going to see the notification on the screen. You can touch it. Let's see if we can get one of those showing up right now. So here you can see we have the Moto Display powered up. You can touch it and it gives you notifications. I am of course hiding my notifications, but you can go and you can open up into the email account or you can unlock. So this is a really nice feature. This is one of the features I really, really love about the Moto X. Now I have this accessible in a much cheaper device. And then with Moto Assist, we can turn on the nighttime mode so we don't get disturbed. And you can also do a similar thing for meetings. So you can choose during what part of the day if you have a special meeting going on where you don't want to be interrupted. So there's a lot of stuff here that they have included. This is a nice cheap phone for $150, but it has a lot of very nice features. Now I have installed Asphalt 8. And I'm happy to say that it plays seamlessly. So this has an Adreno 306 GPU, it's 400 megahertz, and I'm just really happy to see that we can play games without any issue. It's actually quite smooth as well. No one said I have good skills though here. Really not a bad little phone at all. So doing our final spec look through, this is Android 5.0 Lollipop, really happy to have that. It's a little bit stuttery here and there at times, but sometimes it's perfectly smooth. We have the LTE variant here, so this is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 410 SoC, 1.2 gigahertz quad core CPU. We've got an SoC with 64 bit support, We've got one gigabyte of RAM. So with one gigabyte of RAM, it's going to be shutting down applications probably pretty aggressively. 8 gigabytes of internal storage, and it looks like we've got five to ourselves. So we've got this 4.5 QHD display, 540 by 960, 245 PPI IPS display, Gorilla Glass 3. We've got the water resistant coating. And no, I won't be putting this in water because of what happened to the last Moto E. The entire phone still works just fine. It's just that the display cable burnt out, so we don't have a backlight anymore. The touchscreen works, the display is working, but no backlight. And we've also got our bands here. So you can see for LTE, we've got bands 2, 4, 5, 7, 12, and 17. 5 megapixel rear camera. And we do have autofocus. VGA camera on the front. 720p video capture. So really nice little phone here. And that is really all I want to say about this for this moment until I have a chance to play with it more. So now I want to wrap up this video by thanking my sponsors over at audible.com so much for making content creation possible. If you don't know who Audible is, they're a leading online provider of downloadable audio books with over 150,000 titles from many, many different genres. My favorite are the business section, the self-development section, and I genuinely do enjoy listening to these audiobooks. I like to listen to them by the Android application, which works really well. So the one that I'm listening to currently right now is called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Powerful Lessons in Personal Change. Now this is an iconic book. This is a book that is life-changing to many people and it's something I just started listening to. So the author, Dr. Stephen Covey, narrates this himself and he talks about seven habits or more behaviors that really help people change how they see the world, really help people in their personal and their professional lives. I am liking it so far and I am curious to finish listening to it. So if you're curious to check out this along with me, Follow audible.com slash Erica. You can download this audiobook for free and also try out Audible service for free. What's really nice about Audible is that they're an Amazon company, so you can easily sign in with your Amazon information. Also, you're free to exchange the book and get a different one at any time. So if you are looking to find more effectiveness in your life or a way of changing the way you see the world to become more effective, check out this book. 
audible.com slash Erica. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I only get to keep this for 30 days. This is the reason why I like purchasing devices myself. But during that 30 day time period, I'm going to check this out, see how I feel using this as a daily driver, especially versus a flagship Android device. And again, I really like using these cheaper devices and having a chance to see what I can get them to do. So I will use this and have a good night.